I've conducted over 850 technical interviews at Amazon and trained thousands on how to assess technical talent. In this video, I'll share six actionable steps you should take today if you're looking for a tech job. I guarantee you're not doing all six. The job market is competitive right now, making it hard to stand out. Follow the advice in this video and you'll have a better chance than 99% of other candidates. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Steve Wynn, a former Amazon principal engineer turned content creator. My goal is to help 1 million people uplevel their careers by taking a structured and engineering approach to their lives and career. Want more? Sign up for my free weekly newsletter or join my Discord community of over 5,500 encouraging people who are also upleveling their careers. You'll find links for both in the description below. Let's start by looking at the big picture. Getting your next job involves two phases, landing the interview and nailing the interview. Focusing on one, but not the other, is a losing strategy. If you get interviews, but don't prepare, you won't get hired. But the opposite is also true. You can spend all of your time preparing for an interview that never happens. It's tough to balance both when you're not getting any bites. But here's what I know. Opportunities often come in avalanches. After a long dry spell, suddenly three opportunities will pop up all at once. So my first piece of advice is to intentionally split your time between landing interviews and preparing for them. Don't prepare sequentially just because the job getting process happens that way. Prepare in parallel. If you have no trouble landing interviews, focus only on preparation. If you're in top interviewing shape, concentrate only on landing interviews. But that's not most people. The common failure mode I see is this. People haven't had a callback in months. Their days consists of robotically applying to jobs, half-heartedly attempting tough lead code questions, or tinkering with side projects. They feel accomplished because they've applied to so many jobs, but they're also caught up on all of the latest TV shows and video games. Then, when they finally get a callback, they panic. They're trying to calculate how long it'll take to get into peak interview shape. When can I come in for an interview? Um... I think I'm free in about a year. Hello? Hello, you still there? You want your interviewing skills ready when you need them. Pushing off an interview for too long has two drawbacks. Companies want to fill positions quickly and you'll stop applying for other jobs while you cram. Keeping your skills fresh doesn't take much effort if you've prepared adequately. It's like an airplane. It takes a lot of energy to take off, but once you're at cruising altitude, maintaining it is much easier. Let your skills slip too far and you'll waste fuel trying to bring them back up. Here's a rule of thumb. You should be ready for an interview within a week's notice. If you're not there yet, weigh your time towards preparation. Maybe 20% for job searching, 80% for prep. As you become more prepared, invert that ratio to 80% job searching and then 20% preparation. These percentages are rough, so you should do what works for you, but the key is keeping your interview skills hot. If you got a call back tomorrow, could you interview within a week? If no, then spend more time preparing. Don't waste all of that time waiting, but also don't let the pendulum swing the other way. You still need to dedicate time to finding jobs. Let's talk about finding opportunities. It's easy to fall into a rut doing the same things repeatedly. I've applied to over 500 jobs over the last six months, and life literally has no meaning right now. None of these jobs requires a soul, right? So I should still be good? When people say they've applied to hundreds or even thousands of jobs, they're often doing it one-dimensionally. They'll go to a job board and machine gun their applications. If what you're doing isn't working, you need to switch it up. You can't keep putting all of your effort into the same thing and expect a different result. Did you know that 60% of people get their jobs through networking? Now, I'm not saying 60% of your time should be networking, but it probably shouldn't be 0% either. Does your networking consist of only sending LinkedIn connection requests? How's that working out for you? And that's my second point. Mix things up if you've been trying the same approach without results. Persistence isn't about knocking on the same door 100 times. It's about knocking on 100 different doors. Make it a game. Find variations in your job search. If you're using job boards, apply directly to the company websites. Looking for virtual positions? Try searching locally. Find all companies within a certain radius and work through that list. Apply to jobs outside of your target area. If you're targeting in-person jobs, try applying to virtual positions too. Not hearing back still? For a subset of places you've applied to, go deeper and do some follow-ups. Send personalized emails to the recruiter. Try to track down the recruiter or hiring manager on LinkedIn and send them a note or make a connection. 
Trying the same unsuccessful approach over and over is demoralizing. When your method gets stale, make it a game to mix things up and find variations. Persistence is crucial, but make sure you're not just knocking on the same door repeatedly. My next tips are for people trying to break into the industry. Entry level folks are often asking me what side projects will catch recruiters and hiring managers eyes. So you've got free time after applying to jobs, you feel prepared for interviews. Doing a side project is a great way to spend your time compared to gaming, binge watching shows or partying. But the question remains, what side projects should you target? Even if you're unemployed, you don't have infinite time. There are other constraints too. Side projects help you learn new skills, but you also want to do something impressive for your resume or portfolio. Now, I don't know your specific skills, languages, frameworks, or whether you're into the front end or back end. But my third tip is to do high leverage side projects. You want projects that check all of the boxes while minimizing effort. Here's what to consider. One, it needs to be presentable. Have a clear output in mind. Is it a deployed website or an app? Is it code on GitHub, blog posts? Be clear about what your artifacts are going to be and its quality level. Your project can't be high leverage without a tangible output. Two, it needs to be time boxed. Aim for a shareable result within a month. Shorter, it may not be noteworthy. Longer risks never finishing. It doesn't need to be 100% complete, but it does have to be a presentable milestone. Yeah, I've been working on this app. It's like Grinder, but for your pets. I don't know when it's gonna launch, dude. Um, we're still in the product market fit stage. Three, learn one big thing from the project. Don't be overly ambitious. Avoid projects that require multiple new skills. That's a recipe for failure. Be upfront about the main skill or technology you wanna gain. Keep the other aspects within your comfort zone. If you're stuck on too many layers without enough context, the project is gonna be doomed. Four, document your project and learning by building in public. You don't need to be an expert to create content. If you make something that would have been useful to you before you started, that's a win. Building in public has other side benefits as well. It gives you a shareable artifact. It provides context for your portfolio. It solidifies your learning. As Feynman said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it. It improves your communication skills. It's accessible for those who can't dive into your code. Don't assume recruiters have deep technical knowledge or that the hiring managers have time to scrutinize your code. They're more likely to read your readme file. Make it a write-up of what you did and the skills that you learned and interesting insights that you gained. If you can do these four things, it doesn't matter what your side project is or whether it has many users. It'll be high leverage and add value to your job search. If you already have a tech job, but are looking for a change, this next tip is for you. Is this you? You want a new job because you're underemployed, work at a small shop, or lack a traditional computer science background. But you can't stand your job and think you should start preparing for interviews. But instead of diving into leak code, brushing up on system design, and starting interview prep, you tell yourself, I should get my fundamentals right first. You eye a course on Coursera, on data structures and algorithms, or one on AI. Or maybe you want to read designing data intensive applications cover to cover because you've never designed systems before. So you start the course, but don't finish it. You stop reading after chapter two because work picks up. Then you forget about job hunting because things improve slightly at work. Six months later, you think, man, I should probably start interview prep again. And the cycle continues. And that's my fourth point. If you're serious about getting a new job, don't wait to get started. If you want something and now is the right time, just start. It's easy to talk yourself out of it because it'll be uncomfortable work. But the alternative is wasting years of your life at lower pay with less status. You've got one shot at life and work is at least half of your waking hours. Would you rather dread going into the office and wilt or go to an awesome place that pays well, recognizes your work and helps you thrive? Yes, updating your resume and applying for jobs is a pain. Nobody looks forward to it. Interview prep is annoying and often unrelated to your day-to-day -day work, but that's how they hire people. If you're worried about coding interviews, start grinding leak code. You don't need to take a course on data structures and algorithms or read a book to get the fundamentals. If you get stuck on a problem, great. Study what you need to unlock that understanding. The problem with pausing until you learn all of the fundamentals is that it'll take years. That's why it takes about four years to get an undergraduate degree. You can absolutely take courses and brush up on your fundamental knowledge, but do it after your interview preparation. Let the interview prep tell you what concepts you need to study. 
For example, suppose you're doing a lead code question and cobble together a solution. Then you research other solutions and realize you don't understand how they prove one approach is better than the other. That's when you should start to brush up on algorithmic complexity. Or maybe you're doing a system design question and the topic of consistency keeps on popping up. What is it and why is it important? Your job now is to figure that out. This type of preparation is so much better than reading DDIA cover to cover. So if you want a new job, stop talking about it. Don't add unnecessary dependencies. Be about it and get started. Get started. Get started. Get started now. You'll be so glad that you did when you have a better job. If you're looking for your first job in tech and aren't getting any bites, this next tip is for you. So you want to be a software developer. That's what you went to school for. That's your target. You want that big fang salary but you're not getting any bites. You've mixed it up. You got creative about applying. You've been networking your butt off. You're ready to go at a moment's notice for interviews. You've done what seems like every side project that you can think of, nothing. When I graduated from college in 2005, I made it my goal to become a software engineer at Big Tech. I applied to everything under the sun. By 2006, while talking with a friend, an opportunity came up at Amazon for a support engineer role that my friend could guarantee an interview for. I thought about it for a long time. I wanted to be a software developer so bad. So my choice was to hold out and wait or take a detour. I figured having a job was better than not having one, but the risk was losing sight of my goal. So I resolved to learn as much as I could in my support role while inside the company. Within 18 months, I was able to land three internal offers for software developer roles. And that's the fifth point. If you're not getting any bites for the role that you're looking for, try looking for adjacent roles. There are roles for testers, support engineers, like how I started, project managers, SREs, SysDev roles, cybersecurity, not just traditional software development. Evaluate all opportunities, even if they aren't your primary target. It's better to have a job, soaking in as much information as possible, getting exposed to the software development lifecycle at a proper company, gaining professional experience, rather than waiting for the exact perfect thing to come along. It's another way to knock on more doors. And it worked out for me. I'd like to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Brilliant.org. I say this a lot, but I have an unlimited budget for learning and self-improvement. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. Passive reading or watching videos is probably the worst way to learn something. It gives you a false sense that you understand things deeply. What's worse is that you waste a lot of time pseudo-learning when you could have been actually learning. Brilliant has lessons on mathematics, computer science, AI, and more, with new ones added every month. They've added a course on LLMs that I've just completed. I'm no beginner when it comes to machine learning and computer science, but I'm also not an expert in the bleeding edge of generative AI. I use Brilliant to make sure that I have a solid understanding of the underlying concepts and terminology. This enables me to conduct deeper research and continue more advanced learning. Brilliant is a wonderful resource for me so I can stay up to date on things now that I'm no longer working a corporate tech job. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash a life engineer or click on the link in the description where you can get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. New content is added all of the time. They just added a course on predicting with probability, creative coding, and exploring data visually. So go check it out. I'd like to thank Brilliant again for sponsoring today's video. My last tip may be the most important. I know it's really tough out there, but you have to believe that you're gonna get a job. It's just a matter of time. Your job is to shrink that time between now and when you land it. If you get rejected from 99 job openings, the 100th is an independent event. It doesn't depend on the other 99. It's important that you don't sabotage yourself. I feel like we had a connection here. Let me get your number so I can take you out sometime. But before you say anything, just know I've asked 99 other women out and they've all turned me down. So what do you say? And that's my last point. You need to get your head right. The digital age has changed our expectations for when things happen. Before we had phones in our pockets, if you wanted to look something up, you had to go to the library. If you wanted to watch a movie or play a video game, you had to go somewhere to buy or rent it. Now we get everything instantly. So when it comes to finding a job, we have this timeline in our heads about how long we think it's gonna take. We think it should only take us a month or two, but it might take six months or a year or even longer. We don't control the economy and hiring but we do control our inputs. We control our effort and our attitudes. This is super important because most of our effort is gonna result in failure, whether because we're competing with too many people, we make a big mistake during an interview, or they pass on us for some other reason. But you only lose if you don't put your best foot forward, learn from your mistakes, or give up. If you avoid these pitfalls, you'll eventually find a job. 
Your job is to control what you can control. You have to believe that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. I believe in you. If you found this video helpful, there are many more tips on finding a job in this video. If you're having problems finding time for side projects, check out this video on how I was able to do five successful side projects while juggling a full-time job and my family life.